Why does this footage from the 1930s look better than this one straight from the 90s? Or even this one from the 2000s? One is from an era of steam trains, silent films and rotary phones. The other, color TV, home video, pick pop culture and the internet. So why does the older stuff look sharper, richer and honestly more cinematic? Hello, my name is Lilith and today we will try to find the answer. So let's rewind a bit, literally. At the beginning of the 20th century, movies were shot on 35mm film, a format that is basically the analog version of 4K, if not superior in some ways. It captured a remarkable amount of visual information. The colors, shadows and highlights all got printed into a physical strip of chemically treated celluloid, specifically celluloid nitrate in those early days. This stuff was the backbone of film then, a flexible, transparent base that held the light-sensitive emulsion. It was tough and moldable, which is why it showed up everywhere, from billiard balls to cars like this shiny Ford Model T. But it had a huge downside. It was wildly flammable. Cellulose nitrate wasn't just for Hollywood. It powered smokeless gunpowder, fueling rifles and artillery in World War I. But also it was something of a medical marvel. Doctors were using it because of its ability to form a protective film over wounds. People were harmed and cured with the same invention. A chemical chameleon that could immortalize a movie star's smile or ignite a battlefield. By the 1950s, the industry started switching to safer cellulose acetate, but the principle of movie making remained the same. Film doesn't have pixels, instead, it has grains of silver halide, microscopic crystals suspended in gelatin that reacts to light during exposure. That gives it a kind of organic texture and resolution that isn't locked to a specific number of pixels. Theoretically, film has nearly unlimited resolution. What limits it is the quality of the scan used to digitize it. If you take a 35mm film reel from 1932 or even 1920s and scan it today using high-end 4K, 6K or even 8K film scanners, you'll be shocked by how much detail is still in those frames. You can read textures in clothing, see the pores on faces and catch subtle background details. Silver halide grains captured everything the lens saw, and the nitrate base held it all together. Flammable or not, it was a brilliant medium. That's why you can remaster an old movie and have it look like it was shot with an expensive cinema camera, say, last year. It's rich, sharp and has a natural contrast and dynamic range that still holds up. Even smaller formats like 16mm film, used for educational videos, documentaries and indie films, can be stunning when properly restored. Then came the 1970s, 80s and 90s, and things went downhill. Enter videotape. Formats like VHS, Betacam, Hi8 and U-Matic revolutionized how we recorded video. They were more affordable, didn't require film processing lamps and let people record straight to tape and play it back instantly. For TV news, talk shows and home movies, this was a huge leap in practicality. But that leap came with a price – image quality. Videotape records video as a magnetic signals rather than light. That means much lower resolution and a much narrower dynamic range. For example, VHS, the dominant home video format, had an effective resolution of about 350 by 480 pixels. Want to feel the pain? Here is what this video would look like with that resolution. Even high-end professional formats like Betacam SP or Digital Betacam only offered modest improvements in clarity. Colors were flat, contrast was weak, and fast motion often turned into a smeared mess. 
we've lost the depth and nuances that film naturally captured. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, TV broadcasting stepped in. Most TV standards around the world were designed in the mid-20th century and had huge limitations. NTSC, the American standard, only displayed 480 interlaced lines, roughly the equivalent of 720 by 480 pixels, with half the image drawn every other frame. PAL, used in much of Europe, was a bit better with 576 lines, but it still suffered from similar problems. To put it bluntly, if you shot something beautifully on a film, if it aired on TV in 80s or 90s, most people saw a blurry, low-contrast version of it. Same way, if someone in 1989 sat down to watch a 1930s movie on TV, they weren't seeing the original beauty. They were seeing a version of it that had been scanned to tape, compressed, downsampled and broadcasted through a system that threw away most of the original quality. But why were we okay with this really visible downgrade? The answer is laziness. No need to go to the movie theater, because now you have it at home. Small, blurry, but right here in front of your dining table. By the 90s, video had fully taken over. Camcorders were everywhere. Birthday parties, weddings, school plays, street corners. We were documenting everything, but in mediocre quality. Formats like Mini-DV and Digital 8 made digital recording more accessible. But digital didn't always mean better. These cameras had tiny image sensors, plastic lenses and heavy compression algorithms to save space. They could technically shoot at 480p, but the footage often looked soft, noisy and flat. These devices also lacked dynamic range, meaning anything shot in high-contrast lighting was doomed. Shadows became black blobs and highlights turned into white patches. Color accuracy? Forget it. Often, it was a total mess. And unlike film, there was no hidden fidelity to recover later. A lot of videos from that era were captured at the limits of their format. If you try to upscale a home video from 1996 today, even using fancy AI tools, you're just inventing details that weren't there in the first place. For example, here is the first ever video uploaded on YouTube on April 24, 2005, exactly 20 years ago. And here is the upscaled version. Very sad and disturbing, I might say. All this got a name. The Digital Dark Age. We had more cameras than ever, cheap camcorders, early digital point-and-shoots than mobile phones, churning out endless footage, but it often aged terribly. Magnetic tapes from 80s and 90s warped and demagnetized living VHS home movies as glitchy ghosts. Early digital formats like mini-DV or those clunky hard drive recorders? Good luck finding a working player or the right codec 20 years later. Files got corrupted, hard drives failed, and cloud storage wasn't a thing yet. So entire archives vanished when someone's basement flooded or a server got wiped. Even when the data survived, it was often low-res, blocky and compressed to death, like YouTube's first video. Meanwhile, old film reels, forgotten in dusty basements, were quietly waiting to be rediscovered and scanned. As long as it's stored in decent conditions, film can last over 100 years. In 2015, Institut Lumiere made a restoration of one of the first publicly shown and wildly influential films in cinema history. The original movie was shot in 1895 and scanned in 4K 120 years later. Celluloid nitrate might degrade if it gets too hot or humid, sometimes even catching fire if mishandled, but when carried for, it endures. Celluloid acetate, its less volatile successor, also holds up well. 
Magnetic tape, on the other hand, not so lucky. Tape deteriorates, loses magnetic fidelity and can suffer from mold or stretching. It's far more fragile, so if you got old childhood memories trapped on those cassettes, you'd better think about digitizing them. Because time is ticking and those tapes won't wait. It took until the late 2000s and early 2010s for digital to truly start competing with film, not just in convenience, but in quality. Cameras like the RAD1, the Canon 5D Mark II, and later the Unreal Axa didn't just upgrade image quality, they changed the game. RAD introduced raw recording, giving editors full control without quality loss. Harry went with ProRes and LogC, delivering incredible dynamic range with a file format that was easy to work with. Together, they redefined how films were shot and finished. And the 5D? It gave indie filmmakers full-frame cinematic visuals at a fraction of the cost. Beautiful images weren't just for Hollywood. Suddenly, digital video could look cinematic, not like soap opera or newcast, but like a feature film. You might wonder why IMAX isn't on this list. Surprisingly, it's an old-school invention, born in the 1970s with those massive 70mm reels. But IMAX didn't grab the spotlight until 2008, when Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight unleashed its full power. In a way, this gorgeous standard, delivering beautiful stunners like Dune, Interstellar or Oppenheimer, was held back by the same digital Dark Age scouts. Those days are long gone, though. Now even smartphones pack tech that outshines pro gear from the early 2010s. 4K HDR, battery slow motion, rock-solid stabilization, all in your pocket. Digital's not just caught up. Some argue it's pulled ahead in spots. Unbeatable consistency, killer low-light shots, and editing that doesn't need a darkroom. But still, we only got here by rediscovering what film like IMAX's 70mm had nailed decades ago. Resolution that pops, dynamic range that breathes, and the raw power of capturing it right the first time. So why does footage from the beginning of 20th century sometimes look better than footage from the 1990s? During the tape era, we prioritized accessibility and affordability over image fidelity. We made a video cheap and portable, but not beautiful. And in doing so, we forgot that we already had an amazing format. Film was high-res before high-res was a thing. It could capture images so detailed, so vivid, that we're still discovering how good it was. Now we've come full circle. We're back to thinking about quality. We want depth, color, detail and flexibility. We want our images to last. We started with film, wandered through lo-fi jungle of tapes and early digital. And now, we're finally honoring what made the golden era so golden, just with better tools. It took nearly a century, but we made it back. And next time you see a beautifully restored footage from the 1930s, remember, magic was always there. It just took a while for us to see it again. Thank you for your time. See you in the next video.